There was a recent blog post on the Washington Post about essentially slope and and how Khan Academy talks about it. And and we are big fans of of when uh, there there is this type of discussion in in the public. But the math in the blog post was actually very 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 wrong. And so I thought this was a good opportunity to to go over it and 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 hopefully uh, reinforce our understanding of of the idea of slope. So these, these are excerpts right over here. It says, take Kahn's explanation of slope, which he defines as rise over run. An effective math teacher will point out that rise over run isn't the definition of slope at all, but merely a way to calculate it. That, that statement is actually wrong. The definition of slope, and I got this from Wolfram, and if you go to pretty much any, any credible mathematical site, it will define slope as rise over run. This is the definition of slope. This isn't just any regular equal sign there. That is a triple equal sign. And triple equal signs, a triple equal sign in this context literally means by definition. The definition of slope is change in y over change in x. It's a change in the vertical axis over the change in the horizontal axis. It's not just a one change of variable with respect to another change. It's explicitly a change in the vertical axis relative to the horizontal axis. So if you think of it this way, change in y, if you're going if you're taking the slope between this point and this point right over here, how much has y changed? Well, it's changed that much, and how much has x changed? How much has x changed? Well, it's changed that much. And so it's literally change in y over change in x, or another way to think about it is how much you have risen over how much you have run, over how much you have run. This is the definition of slope. And then the rest of the statement, in fact, slope is a rate that describes how two variables change in relation to each other, how a car's distance changes over time, how the price of an iPod changes as you buy more memory. And this is also kind of wrong. A slope can represent a rate of change if, but it depends on what which variable is plotted on which axis. Slope is dependent. It's kind of it's a visual thing. It it really is. It's the vertical axis over the horizontal axis, especially when we're talking about talking about the scenario in two dimensions. And to see that, we could take one of these examples. So say how the price how the price of an iPod changes as you buy more memory. If we plot price on the x axis, let's call it p, and if we plot memory, I'll write let's let's write I'll call it, I'll write mem so we don't confuse it with this the slope variable. So if we, I'll just call it memory, I'll just write the whole thing. I'll just say price and memory. Price and memory. So if this is how it's plotted, if this just shows you how much memory you can get as you keep, or if, as, you, as you're willing to pay more, then actually this right over here will not be the slope. The pri how the price changes as you buy more, more memory will not be the slope. And so let me just make this clear. Change in price how the price changes as you buy as the memory changes, this would not be slope in this context if they are plotted in this way. This right over here is not, this is not slope. So in this context, that statement would actually be wrong. In this context, the slope would be how memory changes as price changes. So in this context, it's literally how much does the vertical axis change, so it's going to be change in memory, change in memory over change in price. This is what this is explicitly what the slope is by definition in this context. It cannot be this. So it would actually be very confusing for a student to learn slope as merely this. It is how much the vertical axis changes for change in the horizontal axis. And then later in the post they talk about discussing whether slope always requires units, whether slope should always require units. And this is especially Slope can have units as we go in this situation, memory per price or, or distance per time or something like this. But slope definitely doesn't always require units, and especially kind of in the most pure sense of what a slope is even trying to measure. And to do that, I have a little picture of an actual ski slope. And if you were there and you said, well, how steep is this? And that really is the motivation for the whole idea of slope and why it's even called slope, is really thinking about, well, how steep is this? How, wh how, what's the grade of this surface? Well, if you were doing this, you would say, well, how high, if I, if I go in the horizontal direction a certain bit, and that, the amount that I drew right there looks about 10 meters, how much does my surface increase in the vertical direction? That is what slope is all about. And so the way it looks here, that looks like it goes up about, I don't know, I'd guess that's about 3. 
that's about 3 meters. And so the slope here literally is the rise over the run, how much we change in the vertical axis over the horizontal axis. So the slope of this ski slope, the slope of this right over here, let me write it. So the slope right over here, and I'll put the units in here to show that they cancel out, that the slope is actually unitless, even though we are explicitly talking about distances. The slope where these skiers are hanging out would be equal to, if we assume these numbers, your change in the vertical direction, which is 3 meters, over the change in the horizontal direction, which is 10 meters. And so the meters cancel out. And so the slope, even though we started with distances, is a pure and, and unitless value of 3 tenths. So it's actually, it, 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 it's actually ridiculous to say that slope always requires units.